गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे वी हैव डॉक्टर पवन विग विद गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर वुड यू लाइक टू शेयर योर एजुकेशनल बैकग्राउंड एंड क्वालिफिकेशन विद आर व्यूअर्स Yes, I am Dr. Pawan Vik. I did my B.Tech in Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering from Jamia, and uh, after that, I did the Ph.D. and M.Tech in the same field. Right away, I am doing. Uh, I am uh, working as a dean research in Vivekananda Institute of Professional Studies. So this is all about my education background, and my interest areas or research areas are artificial intelligence, machine learning, and IoT. i love teaching and uh, research is my passion sir uh, what were your uh, plans uh, when you thought about pursuing your phd what was the mindset yes uh, this is a quite interesting question actually after uh, after completion of my mtech i i am uh, i have uh, you know not a good uh, knowledge about a particular subjects so it forced me to uh, since i am from my childhood i am a good learner so i want to pursue my uh, higher education so for that i uh, i took a interview uh, i give a interview in the jamia and there are only three seats so i luckily i got a chance to pursue my higher studies from there and the choosing of topic is one of the really you know it is a difficult task in phd because uh, uh, at the early stage we do not know in which field we want to work uh, uh, in, i mean the the mtech guys or the students those who are just cleared their pg they have a very little knowledge about you know higher studies and phd phd in india particularly in india uh, very few people are there those who go for an higher education particularly this doctorate so yes for the starting uh, period is very difficult for me but uh, as but luckily i got a very good guide or a good mentor he guided me at the every stage and uh, that pursue that basically motivate he motivates me to pursue higher uh, this higher education means your career in higher education that's why this is this is one of the motive uh, or the you may say a uh, force behind me to pursue my higher education in the phd sir uh, as you mentioned and everybody knows that uh, very few people uh, pursue phd in india uh, do you think uh, the main reason might be because uh, european countries american countries they pay a hefty amount for pursuing the phd and in india it is paid very low yes this is this is of course one of the reason because uh, as in particularly in phd you know phd is something in which there is no you uh, there is no uh, like a exam means you need not to be clear some exams as you did it in your btech or your in amtech courses here in phd you have to do certain research and obviously for research you need some environment in india there are two things one you pointed out they pay very less uh, as an uh, stipend to the students another thing is the lack of resources in india there are lack of resources available for carrying out the research like if you want to do something in you know uh, creating uh, artificial intelligence robots or these very few labs are uh, available in india where you can go and do some some sort of practicals and without doing practicals you know there is no real meaning of research so this is i uh, i think this is one of the reason another reason obviously the payment since uh, you see the age factor is also there the the person who took admission in phd it is around 26 or 28 uh, years of um, means they are enter into this uh, at the age of 26 to 27 means this is a range bound where where the person uh, go for an higher education for a phd now obviously they have since uh, they have to look after their family they need money also and in india as a 32000 or 25000 rupees they are given as an stipend to the those who are uh, pursuing this phd courses which is which is definitely less that's why people prefer to go abroad to do their phd uh, and uh, to do their, to pursue their phd just because not only for the money perspective the another thing is the resources which are available in uh, abroad and they can uh, with with that 
they can pursue you, you know they can complete their phd fast so i think both reasons are uh, equally important sir uh, how much time did you uh, take to complete your phd actually in phd there is a mandatory condition across the uh, india in particular in india there is a mandatory condition in government universities or central university that you have to spend 3 years in the you have a minimum lock in period of 3 years means if you completed your task means your research within the 3 years but you are still not able to you know uh, file it as at a final stage for filing or to submit it for a, to the university for evaluation you have a minimum 3 year 3 years of lock in period so in my case i complete i submitted it within the 3 years and completed it within the 3 years uh, means i i enrolled in 2010 december and i completed in 2014 july so but it is a time bound minimum 3 years are required but people maybe take uh, up to 5 to 6 years sir as you mentioned that um, many people take 5 to 6 years and uh, it is considered a 3 year uh, degree we can say or a doctorate so uh, what is the main reason that people take 5 to 6 years very good question again actually 3 uh, 5 to 6 years uh, i am saying the minimum lock in period is 3 years generally people are not able to you know carry out their research they will take around 4 uh, to 5 years to complete their Uh, research work and to uh, to write their thesis but obviously sometimes but the it is on the luck also means in your area if your area is such that that it is booming area or you may say the trending area so might be you are able to you know crack it uh, easily you are research easily or quickly so but there is a flaw from the university side that you have to be at least 3 years inside the uh, in 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 the program it doesn't mean the phd program is of 3 years it doesn't mean the phd program it it has no fixed length means there is a duration you can completed it till 6 to 7 years and different norms for the different universities are there so it doesn't mean uh, 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 while saying this uh, that i completed in 3 years it doesn't mean that the phd is of 3 year of duration it is varying from 3 to 7 years means anybody uh, uh, can finish their task within that particular speculated time otherwise there is an extension period also the sometimes university will give you some extra years to do or to complete your work sir uh, do the university pay uh, full duration uh, i mean if someone is taking 3 years to complete the phd and someone is taking 6 years uh, is the university paying the same amount to them yes this is again a very good question see for uh, there are two kinds of phd uh, right away one is the paid one in which the university is giving you the some stipend and that stipend is not given by the university mind it mind it it is given by the government right so the since the duration is not fixed and you have to pay your fee also means accordingly you have to pay the fee for a year for the central university fees are very less about 3000 5000 rupees but for the uh, universities like state universities or private university they they charge nearly about 1 lakh for a year so you have to pay the fee till the time you are the student if you completed in it in 3 years it is it will give you an advantage of you know uh, saving your money but as far as you are their student means you have not submitted your thesis you have to pay the fee one thing and in other terms uh, the stipend if they are, the, the government is giving to you they have continuously giving to you till the time you are enrolled in bsc but it at a particular time period means if uh, from the university side it is a foundation of 5 to 6 years so they can pay you till the time you are in the you know in the student you are their student and as for uh, as you are their student they will give you some you know task means you have to take some classes to your juniors and uh, you have to conduct the labs means they are not giving the stipend only for a sake of you know you are uh, studying or like this they will give you some certain task like you have to complete this uh, you have to taught your juniors you have to take the uh, uh, care of the lab so some sort of work is given to you accordingly sir so, uh, our team visited your linkedin page 
uh, we found a lot of projects done by you would you like to share any of your project uh, done within your phd period yes there are there are many you know uh, since i am working in the private university but uh, with this we have an you know option to become a co guide in in the various university across india and i am the uh, recognized university guides to the several universities amity is one of them also so the people they approach to me my particular area is ai and iot where we are working particularly to design the real life problems so many people many projects but i remember the latest project that uh, we did it at uh, you know to reduce the carbon footprint so uh, with the help of ai or with the help of iot what it means to reduce the carbon footprint see carbon footprint and nowadays you see the temperature outside is 49 degree about you know it is very 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 troubling so this is all because of uh, us because we did so much pollution due to which this you know the greenhouse effect increases and temperature of the earth goes on uh, increasing so this is one of the major problem across the world so how to reduce this ca- uh, carbon footprint means how to reduce this kind of you know uh, temperature or how to maintain earth cool so this is my latest project where uh, uh, i guided several students those who are, uh, they are working one of them are from uh, two uh, couple of them from the wips also they they working on this where what we did is we calculate the the uh, let us suppose the, uh, we calculate the uh, the electricity electricity consumption of a particular room i am giving you just a gist of that so uh, let us suppose we have a room and we calculated its you know uh, electricity consumptions means there is a fan there is a, there are lights there are you know internet connection there is a te- television so what uh, the, the, there are several devices so what we do what we did is we con- uh, we calculated the uh, electricity consumption of these devices including ac heater everything and and uh, then uh, in another room the same kind of room what we did is you know the same same uh, calculation has been done but this time with the help of uh, you know smart uh, devices means we we put the sensors across the the lights with the fans with the acs so once the once the person get inside the room the fans or ac or these kind of appliances uh, gets on their own and they watch the work means if the temperature is too low inside the room then the ac is uh, automatically off or if the light is proper inside the room then the lights are uh, other lights get switch off so means in other terms what we we say we we calculated the optimized utilization of the electricity inside the room then what we what we calculate you know with the help of iot we can save about 65% of electricity so 60 and if you if you uh, uh, check on my youtube channel also where i i you know mentioned about how to calculate your carbon footprint you can also calculate your carbon footprint just you have to fill some questionnaire in the you know in the form, in the type in the form type where you have to put uh, for how much hours you uh, you use your fan and how much hours you use this your uh, ac so you can easily calculate the carbon footprint of yourself in the same way we calculated the you know carbon footprint of about the two rooms one is with iot another is without iot and we found the surprising result you know there is a 65% reduction in the electricity if we uh, go to the technology so this is this is one of the you know uh, then we explore it since we uh, demonstrated it on a one room but if the if we applied the same thing across the you know full uh, fully house or uh, across the city so there is a there is a you know uh, lot much amount of the carbon footprint can be reduced and people are starting working on it as the technology get advanced obviously with the help of this technology we can reduce this carbon footprint so this is my latest research, research that we are going on and there are several projects are Uh, simultaneously uh, uh, i am running where lot of student across the not only from the my own institution but across the world they are connected with me and we are working on that sir uh, it was nice uh, to hear about your project 
सर अकॉर्डिंग टू यू इज इट कॉमन फॉर द पी एच डी परसिंग स्टूडेंट्स टू बी इग्नोर्ड बाय देर एडवाइजर्स बिकॉज दे आर ऑल्सो प्रोफेसर टीचिंग टू सो मैनी स्टूडेंट्स एंड लोक ओवर सो मैनी प्रोजेक्ट डू यू थिंक स्टूडेंट्स आर इग्नोर्ड बाय देर एडवाइजर्स इट्स अगेन डिपेंड्स अपॉन यू नो सिंसियरिटी ऑफ द स्टूडेंट एज वेल एज योर गाइड if you are work sometime what will happen you are working in you know in uh, some another area which is not aligned to your professor so sometimes they are not taking so much interest in in your work but if you are working in their work means your professor work definitely they are very keen to you know uh, and keep on uh, understand what what you are doing keep on helping you so it is very important that you should work in the correlate correlation with your you know professor or a guide but yes this this is sometimes a problem uh, that i saw many psg with the many psg student that they claimed the, the that their professors are not helping them actually the professor's life is you know very busy they are uh, not only uh, the teaching is there uh, is in, in in it they also have to do several tasks together means they have to evaluate the Uh, performance and so many things so uh, uh, maybe sometimes it will happen that uh, uh, the researchers have a very little connect or maybe no connect with their guides for a period of the for some period but uh, definitely it will not impact their studies if they are passionate they have to be behind, they should have to be behind you know the professor and uh, definitely the professor will help them out but yes there is a there is a flaw sir uh, according to you what are the biggest obstacles uh, for a professor uh, to teach their students like uh, you are teaching in a premium institute what are the obstacles that you feel see obstacles are not you know not there it is created means it it depends sometimes you know some professors get frustrated that you know, due to the low attendance in the class but it not always with the or not always case with the all like me i usually record my lectures so if the students are not available at that time because right away you know there are so many things as the professors are busy in the same way students are busy with their lives so i think it should not be like a hurdle or like a you know obstacle in the path of something but uh, definitely uh, you should be you should have to take that as an opportunity to create something new uh, your vision your you know your way of teaching or your uh, your uh, uh, the mode of teaching you have to be very specific if the students are not in the class it, it doesn't matter you should record whatsoever lecture you want to convey and put it across the youtube and several mediums are there you can share it with the student later on since they have to give the exams so they definitely watch it sooner or later so i don't think so there are much hurdle particularly in my case but yes for others they they feel it like an hurdle like students are not regularly coming in the, into their class how they have to tackle them how how they are sparing well but on the other hand students are preparing their exams they know how to tackle how to create how to answer it but yes this is the problem with some of the professors sir uh, according to you uh, are there any uh, minimum number of theses or papers that should be published uh, by a person to get in a top tier university as a professor are there uh, any requirement yes for a for a definitely for a professors they have certain they have to maintain their api score api means academic performance index score and uh, according to that they they will get their uh, they will get the promotions and everything like uh, every professor must be you know updated Uh, by publishing papers doing doing certain research so this is one of the parameter which uh, particularly those who are in government universities they the professors they have they keep on watch on watch into their academic index and uh, because if they keep on updating their academic performance this these uh, it is they are it is directly related to their salary or their you know Uh, income sir uh, when you were uh, about to complete your phd uh, did you make any plan or you go with the flow yes yes uh, uh, actually everyone you know after the after the completion of your phd you know you have 3 years to to file for an post doctorate program 
post doctorate program is one it is again it is it is an honorary degree it is not a you know the degree based on exams so you have to spend 2 to 3 years on a particular project they will give you some post doctorate degree kind of thing means it is something which is then you you call yourself as a post doctorate now post doctorate particularly everyone uh, anyone who completed their phd they can apply for a post doctorate to the abroad or in their home country within a period of 3 years so means like in uh, if i completed my phd in 2014 i have a 3 years to you know file for a post doctorate and also i tried it and uh, i did it also to uh, uh, means uh, I did it in I, I completed some projects where I got up this post doctorate uh, feas feasibility. Yes, sir. Uh, it was very nice talking to you. Uh, Thank you. To sum up the interview, uh, would you like to give some advices to the younger aspirants who are trying to pursue the PhD? Yes. One thing. First of all, you must have to be focused uh, on the area in which you want to pursue your PhD. The area I mean to say, you know, uh, the broad technology where you are comfortable like artificial intelligence, machine learning, IoT, deep learning, these are what we called areas. And once you selected your areas, then concentrate on the topic. Topic means uh, in which particular topic like in a healthcare or in a re real estate or a insurance or a retail, in which particular area you want to, you know, uh, in vertical topic you want to do your PhD and always keep your topic you know broad initial topic you have to choose broad because uh, there is a chance in the uh, that is vertical BOS board of studies meeting where you can narrow down your topic let us suppose you you choose your topic that you want to study on India initially you took the world India later on you you think that uh, on Delhi it is more specific so you can change a bit your topic means you can narrow down your topic so this is one one of my advice to all of you that whenever you go for an higher studies or choose your topic you make it uh, as a broad sense and later on on the later stage once you develop something you can, can you can narrow down your topic because in PSG particularly once you registered your topic it is it get fixed and if you fix your narrow topic initially, then there is no chance to, you know, uh, change it or to modify it. So this is one of the one of my advice that choosing a topic is one of the, you know, biggest hurdle in doing PSG across world or across India. So this is the only advice from my side. And uh, later on, once you got an admission, it is a regular flow. You can, you know, complete the, your research work and you can easily crack the PhD or got your PhD. Okay. Thank you, sir.